It's one of the must-have gadgets of the age, the small remote-controlled flying machines that go by the rather dull name of drone. However, what for some is a fun hobby is now turning into a huge headache for police and security services the world over. They are having to work out how to protect all sorts of targets, from airliners to politicians, from swarms of these little but potentially deadly machines. Some believe it's only a matter of time before we have a drone-launched terrorist attack. For now, though, it's computer hackers who are set to capitalise. Our technology editor, David Grossman, has been to meet a group of them who've built their own drone. Here he is, droning on. It's easy to see the appeal, both for hobbyists and those with more sinister intentions. I think that to the general public, they are really a low threat, but certainly to the uh, government security forces, to the police, etc. Uh, I think they, they are very concerned because there is a growing use of drones and um, uh, they can be used very maliciously. Uh, it makes it so that guards, guns and gates are no longer a protection means because they can lift up over a six foot, eight foot high fence, fly into the facility, take video footage, attack the, the systems and then return home. The drone crashed into a tree on the White House lawn just after 3 a.m. There have been some pretty high-profile drone incidents in recent months in Washington. The fact that a drone could so easily fly into the grounds of the White House is raising serious new questions about security. In Tokyo, Japanese authorities are investigating a small drone laced with traces of radiation found Wednesday on the roof of the Prime Minister's office. And in Germany, where a drone flew within a few feet of Angela Merkel, her security detail didn't even move. Drones are undoubtedly a new threat to aircraft, to people on the ground who might get hurt. But they're also a new way of delivering old threats. Surveillance, sabotage, terrorism. To that list, we should add data espionage, because it seems that hackers just got themselves an air force. In Las Vegas at the weekend, a group of hackers called Wall of Sheep unveiled this. This drone has an attack platform on it, so it, it has GPS capabilities, it can automatically take off, fly over, hover overhead, and connect to your wireless network, potentially attack, break in, or harvest that information, and then fly back home and, and land. And so we brought that out here for people to see what the potential threat is and risk is so they can start thinking about how they can protect themselves. Wall of Sheep take their name from this, a big wall of shame that they display at conventions and public spaces. In real time, it shows the unsecured logins and passwords that people, the sheep, are spewing out by logging on to public unprotected Wi-Fi. Although the hackers see the complete password, they don't show them in full. But the drone's designer says even securing a Wi-Fi network with encryption wouldn't necessarily be a defense. Yeah. If a malicious yeah. attacker were to, say, disrupt the network connection, convince the other devi the devices to connect to their own separate Wi-Fi network pretending to be the original one, and then forwarding that back through the original network, that's what's called a man-in-the-middle attack. So essentially, the drone becomes the man in the middle, passing on the message in between and listening to what each, each end is saying and possibly changing it. Perhaps the most worrying drone story has come from France. Unidentified drones were spotted flying over seven nuclear plants. A British company is involved in trials with the French government to provide protection for the nuclear facilities from drone attacks. What we have to do here is very quickly detect this small, low-flying object uh, we do that. We then get a, uh, a camera and thermal imager to, to track it through the sky. And then we use a, a smart jammer which disrupts the communication systems on that UAV. So that within about 10 to 15 seconds from detecting it, we can actually control it and either bring it down or, or send it home. The price of the blighter system starts at about a million dollars, so it's not a cheap fix. But with more and more drones in the sky and more and more ways to use them, these little aircraft are going to be a big challenge for years to come.
David Grossman, just two front pages tomorrow morning. First, The Guardian, that endorsement there of Yvette Cooper, the right leader, is the person who can bring both Jeremy Corbyn and Liz Kendall together. That person, best place to do that is Yvette Cooper. While The Daily Mirror goes for we're backing Burnham, Jeremy Corbyn is a man of principle and integrity, but make no mistake, so is Andy Burnham, and only he can lead Labour back to power. Well, that is almost all we have time for, but before we go... William Shatner, who played Captain Kirk in Star Trek, has paid unusual homage to his friend Leonard Nimoy, who, or Dr Spock, who died this year at the age of 83. Shatner asked his Twitter followers to send pictures of themselves doing Spock's famous live long and prosper salute and made them into a beautiful mosaic tribute to his friend. We thought we'd leave you with that tonight. Live long and prosper. Good night. Final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Your ongoing mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life forms and new civilizations, to boldly go where no one has gone before. Hello there. Storms across the southeast made the headlines today, but the threat extends further north and west. Uh, by tomorrow morning, some uh, persistent and heavy rain.